Let's pray. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercies endure forever. This afternoon, Lord, we are so very thankful, Lord, for the opportunity you have given us to converge here this afternoon to support and to celebrate for our boys and girls who have completed the one journey of their educational life. Father, even as they are about to move on, we just want to give you praise, we give you thanks. Had it not been for you, had it not been for your mercies, they would not have made it thus far. So this afternoon, we just want to present the program into your hands. We invite your Holy Spirit in our midst. We pray, Lord, that you preside over the activities. And I just pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that our boys and girls will continue to believe in you, trust in you, knowing that you have great plans for them. In, your, in the word you said, you know the thoughts you think towards them, thoughts of peace and of evil, to give them a future, to give them a hope. But so they continue to hope in the Lord and trust in Him as you continue to lead them day by day, ever in your own sweet way. So preside over this afternoon session and have your way in our hearts and our lives. And above it all, we will give you the thanks, give you the praise for what you have done, what you continue to do, and what you will forever do in our lives, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This time from Sarah. Sarah, you're welcome. Sit at the front, but it's too far, right? Very too far. Yeah, if I can get it close and slightly, it's a little bit more than I'm still on. Maybe I'm just going to see the furniture in front of the table. Okay. Okay, then we'll see. We have a few different areas here. I was going to say this thing there. So I was going to say this thing there, everybody. Thank you, sir. Parliamentary representative for the St. Joseph constituency, Honorable Dr. Alice King. Ministry representative and also OES representative. Dominica, Mrs. Stephanie Barron, keynote speaker, Mrs. Shanda Johnson, principal of the Caleb John Laura Primary School, Nadia Henderson, principal of the, sorry, staff members of the Caleb John Laura Primary School, village council representative, Mr. Bond Vidal, Principal of the Western District SBA Primary School, Mrs. Shirley Mills, Former Principal of the Caleb John Laura Primary School, Ms. Vern Penden, Fire Officers of the St. Joseph Fire Station, Special Invitees, Parents, Students, well wishes, class of 2021, good afternoon and welcome. I could have easily ended my welcome address here. However, I won't be doing justice to the cause if I do so. Therefore, I'll go on a little further. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord has given us today, and we are to be grateful. In one of the favorite songs sung at the Caleb John Laura Primary School, A New Day, I believe in one of the verses, if I am not mistaken, there is a line that said, It's a new day is that we have been given by the Lord. Indeed, the Lord has given to the Caleb John Laura Primary School a new day, a new season, a time of rejoicing, a time of gladness, a beautiful day, a glorious day, a time of victory, a time filled with grace. I am delighted to welcome all of you here today. Indeed, I appreciate your efforts, that the effort that you have made to come and celebrate with us. Let me assure you that you won't regret it. And also, I want to bring in our eyes 
The Lord is doing great things at Caleb John Dora Primary School. And indeed, it is a day for us to rejoice. We will rejoice. We will be glad because the Lord has shown his light on Caleb John Dora Primary School. Have a wonderful city. Do enjoy the proceedings here this afternoon and have a blessed day. I welcome all of you. Thank you, Ms. Sarah.
I'm just give you a brief rundown on the staff of the Kennedy General Primary School. In grade K, we have Mrs. Leon Liquid Joseph. Grade 1, we have Mrs. Caprina Stout Bruno. Grade 2, we have Mrs. Marcia Blair Liquent. Grade 3, Ms. Jarvis. Grade 4, Ms. Charles. Grade 5, Mrs. Lawrence. This is Pamela Lawrence. Grade 6, this year we're fortunate, we're blessed to have two grade 6, one led by Mrs. Jerry Vidal Gobier. I said good, right, Ms. Vidal? Ms. Gobier? Well, you know, lawyer practice in that. And the other one led by yours truly, Mr. Lee. Do you all know Mr. Lee? Good thing you're not there today because I want to my family. So they spring some cap that is there. All right? You standing up? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you about him in a bit. Okay, at this time, I would like to call to the podium our principal, our principal, Mrs. Nadine Mark Henderson, as she gives us the principal's address. Put your hands together for this. Representative for the St. Joseph constituency, Honorable Dr. Alice King. We have Ministry Representative slash OECF Representative for Dominica, Mrs. Stephanie Barron. We have our keynote speaker this afternoon, Mrs. Shanda Johnson. We also have the staff and members of the Caleb John Noah Primary School. Village Council Representative, Mr. V Vidal. Principal of the Western District SDA, Mrs. Shirley Mills. Former principal of the Kevin John Laura Primary, Ms. Vern Penden. Fire officers of the St. Joseph Fire Station. Special invitees, parents, students, well-wishers, and class of 2021. I bid you a happy good afternoon and well welcome. A warm welcome to everyone. So. When we gather for events like such, graduation, be it a preschool graduation, a primary school graduation, secondary school, college, university, the levels in which the children operate at the institution might be different, but the emotion that grabs the heart of everyone attending is the same. Sometimes it amazes me when I look at preschool graduation. The parents take all sorts of positions to take photos. The parents scream and sometimes you ask, what did they do? And somebody once told me all they did was um, crayon, urinate, defecate, make noise, make teachers talk, and the parents blow the roof off when they call them. Nonetheless, the emotions are the same as if the students were graduating from university. And you know why? It simply tells us when our children succeed, parents, well-wishers, grandparents, uncle, whoever the people attending the ceremony are, they are just as excited and just as grateful, just as proud that if it was a university graduation. The same emotions, I am very certainly sure, fill this room this afternoon. However, in spite of everything that is happening, I do not want to miss on the opportunity to say thank you, Jesus. Because he has taken us through a lot. As I begin, you might realize I'm not watching any paper because really I have nothing written down. <laughs> but as we stand here this afternoon, I remember on the 6th of September, 2020, when we headed to school, we were filled with all sorts of concern because we were coming back to school after a major scare from the COVID pandemic. Some of the parents were also filled with much concern whether they wanted the children to return to school. And if they did take the chance of sending them to school, would they be safe? Would we be able to keep them safe? Would their children, their well-loved students, would they be safe? in our care. And to tell you the truth, 
we were just as concerned as a staff, for we knew not what lay or lay ahead of us. But this afternoon we can stand here simply because of the grace and the mercies of God that he successfully saw us through an academic year 2020 to 2021. It was nothing of our doing, but simply the grace and the mercies of God that guided us, sustained us. When we got weak and we became overwhelmed, he empowered us and he put us back in a state where we were solid and we were well grounded. So this afternoon we owe all the praise, all the glory and all the thanks to God, to Jesus, whichever one you want to say, and to his Holy Spirit for indeed being our sustainer. So let's begin. Usually, principals would stand and they would read a speech that is that follows a certain protocol. It says all of the things that happen at school. But you know what? This afternoon I chose to defy the norm. Because what is important when we meet on a day like this? If I should ask myself a question, what is important when we gather at such an occasion? It's the students that are graduating. In, in my students' case, they are moving from one level, transitioning to another level. What is important are the students who have gathered from other grade levels to receive awards for performing well or for doing something that was worth recognizing. What is important are the well-wishers who gather here with us not to go back and think of all the things that have happened, but to celebrate one and to continue to stand with us as the children continue on their education journey. What is important are my parents who have gathered here today that I will continue to speak to because for many, secondary education could be the end of education for many, but for these, it is not the end, but it's only the beginning. So there is still much I want to say to the parents. And so I'm going to begin with my students, my graduating class, so I turn a little to face them. These students are special to me. Not that those who left last year were not special, but the reason these are very special to me, these are the first set of, the, or the first graduating class to have started a year and ended a year under my leadership. So these students are very special to me. When I came in in January of 2020, it was almost like a chaotic phase. The first month went by okay. The second month I was just beginning to get my footing as a new principal. And somewhere in March, if I'm not mistaken, the news of COVID getting to our shops sent everybody haywire, and the entire academic year was disrupted. And there was not much for the very students and teachers I was just getting to know. We were now working from home and learning from home. And then, the test of my staff, that is where the true test of my staff began. And from that moment, I begin to realize who are the teachers I was leading. So the staff that I had when COVID came, this was the staff that said, you know what? Our students do not have devices and we do not have a means of getting papers to them, but we have a computer room and even if it's not fully equipped, we have a few computers and our doors will remain open until such time that the student returns. And then I had staff members who would report to school to ensure that the children close by who could come, we had to stagger the times at which they come in, but they could still come and use the computers at home because even if COVID hit our shores, learning did not stop. And so the students who were not equipped to learn, we made them know that the school doors will be open. And at any minute that they want to walk in, they can walk in and they are sure to find the staff waiting. And those who they could not come and the teachers were able to bring worksheets to their home, that was also another test. For we visited the homes. And we called the homes because I made it my point of duty to get a register, so to speak, a directory of my parents. 
And I called as many as I could. And I wanted to know what was your emotional state. Because if the parents' emotional state is not okay, my students are not going to be doing well. And so I spoke with parents and I spoke with students. And then I had teachers when we could not get Zoom and we could not get Google Classroom. Their WhatsApp phone became the avenue the, or the medium to which they would reach the children. So they would call children by two because on a WhatsApp call you could have a maximum of three. So they would have two students and the teachers and they would read and they would teach them and they would listen to them read. And then I realized, okay, if that's my staff, then we are going to make it through. If that's my staff, we are going to succeed. And so today, I am very proud of the staff that I lead. And let's put our hands together for the staff of Telegram Thank you very much. Now, my students, when they walked back in on 6th of September, it was something else. And you know why it was something else? Because we have been disconnected to some degree for a very long time. And it was the first time that we were all coming in together. So it was a pleasure to welcome those I already knew, and it was also a pleasure to welcome the little ones who were new. And so from that day, we started on the journey. We started. It's mostly a journey of learning and instruction. It's mostly a journey of teaching and learning. And in between all of this, so teaching at one end, learning at one end, and in the center we had love, we had togetherness, we had care, we had concerns, and we had our challenges and difficulties. But you know what? Here we stand today and we are very proud that we did not fail. And the waters that came our way did not cover us. And so students, this afternoon I want to start off by saying, I am proud, very proud, because there were many things that came your way that could have stopped you. Some of them came as the COVID pandemic. Some of them were school factors. Some of them were home factors. And some of them were just the social ills in the community. But here you stand today, victorious and not victims. Here you stand today, having achieved a new milestone. As we ponder today on everything that you have gone through, Consider yourself fortunate also, because there were many students who started the school year all over the world and did not get to see such an occasion. For many of them fell straight to death. Many of them, their school life were cut short because of some financial difficulty. Many of them in countries I can think of could not attend school because of war, because of fighting, because of bombs falling close to their school, destroying their school, destroying our homes. But you had none of this to worry about. Our school gates were always open and you could come in. And for that you were rather fortunate. Let me start. One of the things that I would always say to you and to the rest of the school is, it would be something else. If we always get what we wish for, then the term, if horses were, what it says the term? If beggars were, if wishes were horses, then even beggars would ride. So in that case, I'm telling you, there are many things I would be starting with maybe being a millionaire. I'll just wish it, and here we are. But I always said to you, you do not get what you wish for, but you get what you work for. And even as the common entrance results were given, some of you felt disappointed, some of you were elated, and some of you didn't know how to feel. But at the end, you know what? The very thing I said to you is exactly what happened. You got what you worked for. I remember the days we stood in the classroom and at assembly, and we said there will come a day to play. There will come opportunities to play. But from September to June, we have sports day. We have break time. These are the moments to interact at school, and these are the moments to play. But when the bell rings and we get into the classroom, then we put play aside. I can tell you, parents, 
And I can even remind the students there were many who did not heed that call. And they would still play. And we would go back with the begging and the plea, pleading, please study the book. For those of you who did just that, good for you, honestly. For those of you who took it seriously and gave it your all, good for you. For those of you who probably did not do that, it's not all bad, you know, because you are not at the end. It's a transition period. And as a matter of fact, this is where true learning begins. What we gave you was the foundation so that when true learning begins, you would be equipped to take on the task and transition into another phase. So you still have an opportunity. My mommy would say when they ask people to pull up their socks, she said, in case you are not wearing any, it's an opportunity to put it on. So to my students, those who probably didn't have their socks high enough, it is not the end and it's not almost. It's an opportunity to put it on because you are going to transition into high school and you will need to have socks on. You will hear people say it and it is a fact. Your future is ahead of you. But you know who has the future, the power to impact your future? You know who it belongs to? It's in your hand. And the future that you are going to have tomorrow depends on what you do today. I always say that. Children are never too young to learn to curse. And then I also believe they are never too young to learn. If nobody has to teach you to curse, but you can learn to curse. If no one has to teach you the lyrics of the songs, but you can learn it, then you can learn the content at school. And I believe that. And so students, the same way that you put so much energy into TikTok, and you put so much energy into social media, and you put so much energy into walking the streets with your friend and you are lining. Put energy into your schoolwork. Put energy into your education. Ed education is not all. For God comes above that. But we live in an accredited society. That's what I call it. It's a society if you have a degree in food and nutrition, you, will, you can become a minister. Because what they're concerned about is, do you have a degree? When you live in such a society, you cannot take your education for granted. And so I am telling you, students, to get ahead in life, you need God. Never forget that. But you need to have some sort of credit on a piece of paper. You need it. And don't let the people fool you. And don't let the circumstances in society deter you either. Our society has an impact on my students and how determined they are to learn. Because sometimes our students see people who are not working hard, prospering in society. And people who are working hard are not making it. But students, that's not your business, you know? You know what is your business? Your lives. And it matters not what you see around you. What matters is this future I want to have for myself. I'm not the keynote speaker, so I'm not even going to reach there. But I'm going to tell you one thing. The society outside there has a lot to drown you, to bury you, a lot to destroy you. For the word of God does not lie. And it says the enemy cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. And he will do everything to steal purpose from you. You know when you first brought them to school in grade K? You had all sorts of hopes for them. I hope you still have these hopes for them. Because the future is still ahead of them. Do not allow the ills of society to bury you. Hold your head up high and determine within yourself that come what may, I am going to succeed. And I'm, just, I'm not just going to succeed, I'm going to thrive, for I'm going to make something out of myself. I've always told my students, I don't know if your parents are rich, but my parents were not rich. And I heard Mrs. 
bar and she said something at a workshop I attended. She said she couldn't bring 50% out of her father's home because her father said, I do not give you 50% care. It's not 50% food, it's not 50% clothes, it's not 50% anything. So do not bring 50% at my home. Parents, I do not know if you're giving them half care and half food. So they should not be bringing you any half performance at your home. And I always tell them, because I know your parents are not rich, but yet still, the little money that they have, they spend it to send you to school. School bag, books, food every day, snack, and all of the other things. At least for that, fight, fight, at least for that. Fight to make them proud. At least for that. Because my mother was not very rich and she worked every day to make sure that I could survive. I did one thing, it's purpose within me that I would surpass my mother wherever she reached. And I always tell my, my own children, aim to surpass wherever I reach in life. Because that's what I work for. I did not work for you to reach lower than myself. And I'm sure you parents sitting there did not work so that they can be lower than where you reach. Students, do not give up on yourself. When you go to ITSS or wherever you end up, choose your friends. I can give you one advice. Family members, we have no choice. Whether we like them or not, they are our family members. So the only thing we have to do is learn to live peaceably with them. But when you get to school, choose your friends. My mommy taught me a lot. She, would, she used to say, birds of a feather flock together. And if you are not kept like them, because there was another one that said, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Mommy used to say, if you are not kept like them, I'll tell, them who you, I'll tell you who you will become. Because peer pressure is something else. And it doesn't just affect children. Let me give you, just to lighten the moment, students, and even parents, let me tell you the effect of peer pressure. So you know when we come to such events, you want to make sure you look good? And the in thing nowadays is either we add extension or we add lashes, not true? Yes. So today I went to Tom, I said, you know what, I'm going to try some lashes. <laughs> I went to a salon and the hairdresser pulled out the lashes. I said, you don't have any that doesn't look like a broom? <laughs> she said, no miss, you'd have to go and buy that. So I step out and after 20 minutes by beauty wise, I think I found something that was short enough. When I came back and I pulled it out, she laughed. She said, miss, you are not a principal. You got this too short. Anyway, after more struggle, she put it on the phone. I said, pray that I can find my way home because I'm not used to that. By the time I got home, I'm standing in the mirror and saying, but all the ladies put in lashes, but why do I look like I'm dope? You know what you look like when you're dope? Because I cannot really open my eyes and it's like elongated. And then I look at myself and say, I'm going to address my students and give them a warning against peer 